Are you ready for some good old fashioned handcrafted artisanal CNC guitar building action? Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Highline Guitars YouTube guitar building channel. In today's video, I'm going to continue with part four of my Delta guitar build. That's the guitar where I'm going to be combining the features that I like from a headless guitar with the features that I like from a traditional guitar that has a headstock. And what I'll be doing specifically is I'm going to be making this fretboard that you see right here. So let's jump in and get started. A CNC machine doesn't know where the blank is positioned on its own because it doesn't have eyes to see it. So the operator, myself, has to tell the machine where that piece is located. And what I'll do to accomplish this is I will mark the center of both ends of my fretboard blank as well as both side edges. Then what I can do is place the blank right in the center of my wasteboard and clamp it down. And once that's accomplished, the next step is to go through the process of telling the machine where that blank is located. And the way that's done is, first of all, the machine has to be homed. And that means it's moved to a known starting position, which in this case is the lower left corner of the wasteboard. There are limit switches or homing switches built into the machine. And once those are tripped, the machine, the controller, knows exactly where the spindle is located. From there, I can then jog it numerically uh, to a precise distance over to where the lower left corner of my blank is. And that's how the machine knows exactly where the blank is located and how it can begin the process of carving. After I've homed the machine and then jogged it over to the start position for routing the fretboard, I can then install the bit that I'm going to be using for this carving operation. And the first operation is to cut the fret slot. So the bit that I'm going to use is a 0.024 inch diameter two flute spiral end mill. At this point, the machine is home to the XY start position. However, I still need to home it for the Z axis start position, and I'll use a probe to do that. And what this will do is it will tell the controller exactly where the tip of the bit is in relation to the surface that I'm going to be carving. The settings I use to cut the slots uh, are 20 inches per minute feed rate, a plunge rate of 9 inches per minute, a depth of cut per pass of 0.01 inches, and a spindle RPM of 20,000. And I also use a ramp of 20 degrees so that the bit is gradually introduced to the wood. It'll take about 30 minutes to cut all 24 fret slots, which isn't too bad when you consider how long it takes to cut the same slots by hand using a fret saw and a jig. Of course, if you use a specially designed table saw blade to cut your fret slots, that'll only take a couple of minutes. However, the slots go all the way from one side of the fretboard to the other. My slots stop short in what are called blind fret slots. After the slots are cut, the next operation is to cut the marker dots and the slot that will hold the nut. And to do this, I'm going to swap out that tiny little fret slotting bit for a 16th inch diameter two flute spiral up cut end mill. In 
If you're enjoying this video, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. That always helps this channel to grow. If you'd like to do a little bit more and help support the channel financially, you can click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you want. Also, you can visit my merch shelf, which is displayed below the description, and purchase a t-shirt, plans for building a guitar, or plans for building the tools that we use to build guitars. Now back to the video. For this cutting operation, my settings are 40 inches per minute feed rate, a 20 inch per minute plunge rate, a depth of cut of 0 0.0625 inches, which is equal to the diameter of the bit, and the spindle speed is 18,000 RPM. I've also added that 20 degree ramp in. After every CNC carving operation, the spindle returns to the home start position. However, I needed to move it out of the way so I could do the next step in making this fretboard, which is to fill those holes I drilled for the marker dots. And in this case, what I decided to do was just to fill the holes with walnut sanding dust. And I'll fill them uh, completely full uh, to the point where they're overflowing. Next, I brushed away the excess and filled each of those holes with thin CA glue. After the CA glue had dried, I swapped out the bit for a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral down cut ball nose bit. I'm going to use this to carve the radius which will also remove the excess walnut dust that I glued into those holes so I'll have a nice radius with perfectly flush marker dots. For this operation, my settings were 150 inches per minute feed rate, 40 inches per minute plunge rate, and a depth of cut of 0.25 inches. However, I'm using a finishing cut only. I'm not using a rough cut here. So really the depth of cut doesn't really play into it. The final CNC cutting operation is to cut out the perimeter shape of the fretboard. I'm going to do that with an 8 inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. And my settings are 136 inches per minute feed rate, a plunge rate of 40 inches per minute, a depth of cut of 0.125 inches, a spindle speed of 18,000 RPM, and once again I'm using that 20 degree ramp in. Once that final cutting operation had been completed, the spindle returned to the home position. But what I had to do was move it out of the way so that I could remove the clamps and lift the blank off the wasteboard. And what you'll notice is that the fretboard itself is still connected to the blank with tabs. And that's so that that part, the fretboard, won't go flying around once that bit has cut all the way through the wood. So what I have to do is take a small saw and cut those tabs in order to liberate the fretboard from the blank. And this is the finished fretboard. I can set it aside now and start working on the neck itself. Well, that's all the time I've got for this episode. In part five, I'm going to be making the neck shaft. So until then, as always, Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.